Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for a little lesson. This one deals with quadratic situations number two. And what makes this different than the one we were just dealing with is these are all maximum and minimum problems. If you look at them, it's saying things like minimum product, maximum area, things like that. Um, well, all of these generate quadratics, which is why they're called quadratic situations. And if you want to find the maximum or the minimum, if you remember if you're looking at a graph, that's going to be the highest or lowest point. Uh, and we call that point the vertex. And so one way to solve these problems is to take your equation and convert it to vertex form. If you can get it into vertex form, then you can find out the x coordinate there and the y coordinate there. That's the h and k part, right? Each vertex is a h comma k. Uh, and then you can get your answer solving the problem, whether you need the h value or the k value, whatever it is, um, which is kind of a kind of a process. You see how there's this thing in the middle called completing the square. Uh, it takes some steps. It takes a lot of well, not a lot of steps. It takes several steps to solve it that way. Um, which you can do. You go, you can go ahead and do that. That's fine. You can get the vertex away. In fact, I've done that before. Um, but there's this handy thing. Uh, if you do a little bit of work on this equation and you like don't put numbers in and you convert it into vertex form, you find out that this h value is actually just going to be negative b over 2a. Uh, and so if you just have your equa your quadratic in standard form, you can skip the completing the square process and writing it in vertex form uh, and just use this to get the x-coordinate of the vertex. And so that's what we're going to do. Uh, the x coordinate at the vertex is negative b over 2a. Uh, and so let's come down to a problem, you know, let's start kind of in the middle here, uh, number four. Uh, you decide to start making origami babies and start selling them at your local farmer's market. They're just origami, they're not real babies. Uh, through some clever market research, you have found that the number of origami babies you can sell today depends on how much you charge. You sell the difference between 100 and the cost of your origami babies. What should you charge to get the most amount of money? So um, how much should we charge? That's an unknown value. Let's just call that, I don't know, C, how much we charge, uh, how much we charge for the, these babies. Um, well, this equation is about making the most amount of money. Well, when you make money, we usually call that profit. And that's how much you sell, like how many babies, well, let's, let's give that a, a very well, like, uh, like how many babies, uh, origami babies you sell. And then you have to times that by how much you sell them for, which is the C value, how much we're charging people. Um, so this is kind of the, the basic equation. The profit equals how many you sell times how much you charge. Well, the problem with this is this has two different variables and uh, we're not going to be able to get the maximum if we have two different variables here. There's actually infinitely many answers here, but luckily we have another constraint here actually already underlined here. Uh, you sell the difference between a hundred and the cost of your origami babies. And so we're going to take that and turn it into an expression. How many we sell is the difference between 100 and how much we charge for them, the cost of the babies. So we get a little expression that looks like this, 100 minus C. So we're going to take this and put it in the H spot. Yeah, let's go this way so we can have a little bit of room to work with. Uh, and now our equation, how much profit we're making, is 100 minus C times C. So how many we sell is 100 minus how much we charge. And then C is just how much we charge. And that's going to give us the profit um, or the, the proceeds of this or selling origami babies thing. And so now we have an expression here that only has one kind of variable. <clears throat> and so now we can turn this into standard form and use our handy dandy little bit of information here that X equals negative B over 2A to find the X coordinate at our vertex which in this case is going to be the C coordinate at our vertex because this is functioning like X and this is functioning like Y. Uh, and so let's do some distribution. Let's simplify this down. I got P equals 100C minus C squared. 
And again, let's put this in standard form. So negative c squared goes first, and we got plus 100c. Uh, and normally there's a, a last term here, there's a constant term, uh, which there isn't. And so we can like a, put a plus zero there. It just means that c on the a, b, and c of our standard form, the, the c values, zero. Uh, but let's get rid of that. Oh, it is in standard form now. And now we just need to identify our a value and our b value, and we can get the c value. C, oh, sorry, let me change the zoom. C is going to equal negative b over 2a. So let's get those values. Here is the a value, and we got that a is negative 1, right? There's an invisible 1 in front of c squared. And then here is our b value. It's a positive 100, so b equals 100, not two zeros. And so we can plug those numbers in. So let's come over here. C equals negative 100 over 2 times negative 1. And we do some simplifying. Negative 100 over negative 2. C comes out to be 50. All right. We have found the x coordinate of the vertex, or just the c value at the, the, the vertex there. So this is going to be the maximum in this case, because we're trying to find the maximum, and it turns out to be a maximum. Uh, and it's this 50. But, you know, you're not done yet. You should probably interpret what this means and if it's our, actually our answer. So you have to go back to what, what does C mean? Well, back here, luckily we labeled this, how much we're going to charge is C. We made a little note there. C is how much we charge. And the question was, how much should you charge to make the most amount of money? Hey, we found that. That's the C value at the maximum. And so we should charge $50. So now we found it. It's the C value. Should charge fifty dollars. Um, so there you go. So that's kind of the process. Write your equation out, turn it into standard form, and then use that x equals negative b over two a. In this case, c equals negative b over two a, uh, and you can get your maximum that way. So let's jump to another example. Let's use five. You know, we got a couple mid-range ones here. Uh, this is Brett and his rectangular pen for his puppy, uh, and the one side is against a house. So you won't put that in. So let's draw a little diagram. We got a uh, house thing, and then we're gonna draw, make a little pen here. Uh, and it says he has 36 feet of fencing. So it's gonna go around here, and that's gonna be 36 feet. Okay. Um, what is the largest area he can enclose? Hmm. Well, if you have 36 of feet of fencing, right? There's some constraint there. You can't. Just make it infinitely big, right? You only have 36 feet of fencing. And so there are some dimensions here uh, that can get us to that maximum here. Uh, you just need to select one of these sides to be an X value. Uh, you can put it here, or you can put it here. Uh, I'm going to go with the bottom here. This is called X. And one of the reasons I picked that is because these are actually the same value. Right? If it's a rectangle, those are the same distance there. And that leaves us, well, what's the distance here? Well, if all the way around is 36, and we cut off, we use those two measurements there, what's left over is going to go here, which is going to be 36 minus the two parts, minus x and minus x, or combine them to make minus 2x. Uh, so now we have that. So we got some dimensions here. And we are trying to find the largest area. Remember, the area of any old rectangle is just base times height. Well, here's our base value, and here's our height value. So let's go ahead and plug those in. The area is x times 36 minus 2x. And we have a lovely equation now. Instead of having two different variables, which would have infinitely many answers, we have only one kind of variable on the right side, and so this is only going to have one answer now, which means we could do some solving. Uh, and we need to find the largest area, so again, we're going to search for the maximum on this. And to get the maximum, we need it to be in standard form. So we're going to do some distribution here. We've got the a is 36x minus 2x squared. Rearrange it a little bit, so it's in standard form, minus 2x squared plus 36x. And just like our last one, it doesn't have a constant term on the end. You can put like a plus zero, um, but we don't need it there. Just realize c is zero in this case. 
Oops, sorry. Um, but now we can use our handy little formula. X equals negative B over 2A. Uh, and we need to identify our A and B values. Here's our A. Here's our B. A is always with X squared, so A is negative 2. And B is always with the X term, so B is 36. So we're going to plug those in. And we got X equals negative 36 over 2 times negative 2. Do a little bit of simplifying. We got negative 36 over negative 4. And we got that X is 9. Hopefully I didn't totally screw that up. Yay, multiplication facts. So we got X is 9. And just like the last problem, we need to figure out if this, like, is this our answer? Is our answer 9? And we have to remember what X stands for. In this case, X is just how wide this is. And the problem is asking, what's the largest area? This length is not the area. What we need to do is actually compute the area. And so we need to take this 9 and actually just plug it in to our area formula to get the maximum area, because that's what this is all about. This is an area formula, and we found the x value that gives us the maximum, or it's the vertex. And so we're going to take our area formula and plug in x. Uh, you can plug it into any of these three here. Um, I think the first one's kind of the nicest one. So we got 9, and then 36 minus 2 times 2 times 9. It's a 9. Uh, we're going to do some simplifying here. We got 9 times, let's see, 2 times 9 is 18. 36 minus 18 is, well, 18. And so now we got 9 times 18. Calculators are really good at stuff like this. We got maximum area is 162. And I believe this is in feet. So we'll put the feet on it, square feet. And now we found the answer, which was looking for the maximum area. So realize when you get an answer, you should look at like what it means and if it's your actual answer. In this case, it wasn't. In the previous problem, it was. So just be cog cognizant of like what do you what the things stand for, and I'll help you make sure you're getting the answer. So there you go. A couple examples from quadratic situations number two. Using this strategy, using this little formula of x equals negative b over 2a can help you find your maximum. Good luck.